This is Nanamagari, a brand new Assetto Corsa Toge that is seriously fun. It's almost like someone combined all of the greatest features of the most popular Toges and mashed them up into one. Let me show you what I mean. So after leaving the lovely little spawn area, you're spewn out into this substantially speedy straight. You're able to pick up some considerable speed here, which you can carry into this compelling corner complex, using this lay-by to get a direct insertion. One, two, bish bash bosh and you're through. But you thought that was it? No my friends, this is just the beginning. After keeping it pinned through this very Maggots and Beckets-esque series of corners, you're greeted by this kink in the road. Now this doesn't look too challenging, until you get around it and see what follows. You actually need to break on this kink for a corner you can't even see yet, or you'll propel yourself at Mach 5 into this guardrail. After you get around said kink and manage to slow yourself down sufficiently, you need to steer into this incredible corner complex. To get through it as efficiently as possible, you actually need to sacrifice the racing line and take the ideal line. So we stick to the very right, which will set it up for this tiny little corner. And again, you use the ideal line and hug to the left this time, which will set you up for the hairpin. Or if you have a big set of gonads, you can simply send it down the middle, rip the handbrake and point on those to the exit of the corner. Subsequent to these corners, there are a very interesting series of turns. They're great for testing the grip limit of your car. <coughs> And the final corner even has a gutter, although because the corner is just a 90 degree angle, it's not that useful. Usually, you should try and put a wheel over the gutter onto the grass and cut off as much of the corner as possible, but if you get too greedy, it can massively unsettle the car. We're then onto another high speed section, and you'll need to thread the needle through this S curve. But make sure you avoid these curbs like COVID-19, <laughs> because even if you give it a little peck with your wheel, it's going to decimate your run. If you're driving a bonus stock car from the 90s like I was, there's a good chance your car will start traveling laterally around this curve, which is always fun whilst traveling at 100 miles per hour. And whilst you're rapidly gaining speed, you'll peek over this little crest and spot a pretty sharp corner for the speed you're going. Now it's extremely important not to go code brown here. Just stay calm and composed let off the throttle and dab the brakes just before you turn in, and the corner should carry you through, which works all the time, about 60% of the time. Unless you hit the guardrail of course, in which case I suspect you'll be getting a call from Elon Musk about him wanting to buy your new spaceflight technology. After you come hurtling through that corner, you'll be greeted with another seemingly fast straight. However, there's actually a very sharp corner right down there, which is almost impossible to spot. This is just the first of many blind and dangerous corners, which I find make this toge extremely extremely fun to drive. I like to slam on the anchors at this signpost, and you better be good at braking, because even if you lock up a tiny amount, you're going to have a big old crash. Because I'm in a stock Subaru, I like to give a tiny tug on the handbrake to get the rear end kicked out ever so slightly, which allows me to rotate the car whilst hugging the inside of the hairpin. This will then allow me to set myself up for the following corner relatively easily. And the following hairpin is pretty steep, so if you're going to drift it, make sure the back end doesn't rotate too much. Now we're onto the third high speed section, and and that brings me onto the point of this toge being a mashup of all the greats. If you can spot what each section of this toge looks like is influenced by, let me know in the comments. Now just like it being the third high speed section, here's the third corner we need to break for before we can even see it. And I absolutely love it. Once again we need to break on this kink for this corner. And if you don't break before you can see the corner, you're going to be eating guardrail for dinner. Breaking on a curve for a corner you can't see whilst travelling downhill is pretty dangerous. So get ready to counter steer whilst also maintaining maximum braking. Following this we're put onto yet another straight. But this time, guess what? we have another blind corner. You probably won't spot it until it's already too late, as it's actually hidden behind another crest, but this time it's a series of frigging hairpins. But before we get onto the most exciting part of this toge, I need to give you some trivia. This is actually the section of the toge that the name Nana Magari comes from, as in Japanese, Nana means seven and Magari means corners. Interesting, right? Despite the fact that there are actually 13 hairpins on this toge. So if you're anything like me, you're probably going to start breaking on the crest and enter the hairpin way too fast. But luckily we have this little thing called a handbrake, which will allow you to kick the back end out and get on the power to ensure you don't go flying ass first into the lovely hairpin signage. Speaking of consecutive hairpins, I bet most of you know what shade of toge this section is painted with, but compared to that one, these hairpins are actually really nice. They're not too sharp or steep, 
and they allow you to take some decent speed through them, which is absolute heaven in an all-wheel drive car, as you can simply chuck it in and step on the throttle in a four-wheel drift. And the fact that the insides of the corners are just grass also means you can really push up to the inners of the corners and squeeze out those milliseconds. The scenery of this road is very nice, as I'm sure you've seen so far, and it only gets better. On the signature section of Nanamagari, there is also a second road intertwined with the one you're driving on, which feels really cool when you're drifting in and out of this shadow. Additionally, there's also this thing, which sadly isn't a ramp. It's actually a stopper for trucks and lorries that brakes have failed, but the nice thing is you can actually use it to your advantage if you want to do a Scandinavian flick into the following hairpin. Anyway, back to the most interesting part of the toge. Unfortunately, you can't drive this second road, and it's just there for the aesthetic. But it is very cool to drive over and under it nonetheless, and it really adds something to the drive, but I can't quite place my finger on what it is exactly. However, this consecutive hairpin section of the toge isn't actually comprised of hairpins entirely. It does try to throw you off near the end with two double apex corners, which does add some good variation. The first is like an extended hairpin under the bridge, which is cool within itself. I like to turn into the corner like I would usually with grip, and then when I'm in the shadow, I rip the handbrake to take the second half like an actual hairpin, which is fun to do. And the second corner I'm talking about isn't actually a hairpin at all. At first, it seems like it is, but it's just a prank. And you end up entering this small straight under another bridge, which feels very claustrophobic when you're out of grip after expecting a hairpin. The second corner in this double apex is just a regular right angle. But there's also a little bump in the road, which is kind of like Ebisu jump drift. I didn't have enough time whilst testing this track to actually do a jump drift. However, it's nice to know the option is there. <coughs> After the hairpins, you're thrown out into yet another high speed section. And whilst you're focusing on the low bridge you'll be passing under, yet another blind corner is rapidly approaching, which is yet another tightening double apex. You need to start braking a lot earlier than you usually would, as it's also on a substantial downhill gradient, it's incredibly easy to not slow down enough, or lose the back end under braking and send it into that hecking great big brick wall. Honestly, in my four runs of research for this video, I didn't manage to get it right, and I probably destroyed the Subi suspension, but I did manage to get through without having a big crash, so that has to count for something, right? So after taking the second apex, you'll find yourself in the middle of a town. I absolutely love togas that go through built up areas, and this is one of the best. It actually feels like a town, and it's relatively large. Being surrounded by houses as you slide around corners almost adds an extra reason not to crash as you don't want the Subi to be sitting in someone's living room if you make a mistake. Additionally, the road is lined with gravel here, which will slow you down if you dip a tyre into it, which is fun. After leaving the town, you're onto the final section, which starts rightly with another double apex. Then on the final stretch, you can really push your car. No, just kidding. There's an extremely dangerous downhill blind corner here just before the finish line. It's almost like the Japanese road building people put this corner here on purpose, and it's extremely frustrating when you get an entire run right and crash on the final corner. Nanomagari is one of my favourite togas currently, despite my relatively short time of driving it. Not only does it look incredible, but each section of the track feels different and adds great variation. From the long, fast sections of Akina to the hairpins of Irohazaka, the street level roads of Sadamine, and the blind corners of Tushisaka. There's never a dull moment on this toge which is exactly what I like to see. If you're watching this video, there's a solid chance you're a fan of Initial D. And have you heard that the Irohazaka jump may not be as feasible as we're led to believe? You need to click on this video to find out why.